which is stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Item number six, roll call. Roll call will reflect that all board members and cabinet are present. Moving on to item number seven, approval of minutes. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of July 19th, 2022? So moved, Wendy Jonathan. Is there a second? Second, Linda Porras. It has been moved and seconded to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of July 19th. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, calls for the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I will be abstaining as I was not present at the July 19th meeting. This motion carries. Moving on to item number eight, board meeting addenda. Dr. May Vollmer, is there any addenda to the agenda? No, there is not. Thank you. Item nine, approval of agenda. Is there a motion to approve the agenda of the regular meeting of August 16th, 2022? So moved, Wendy Jonathan. Is there a second? Second, Linda Porras. It has been moved and seconded to approve tonight's agenda. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, calls for the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? This motion carries. Get that a little bit. Item number 10, community staff student recognition. Dr. May Vollmer. Um, yes, we're going to have our public information officer, Mary Perry, give those recognitions. <laughs> Good evening. Welcome to the first day of school. It was a good one. We're going to start with a, a little video. Sean, hit it. The Migrant Education Program serves students throughout Riverside County who migrate in search for their livelihood, which is agriculture, working in dairies or fisheries. Our students live here in the Coachella Valley and the family will migrate to other parts of California or the United States in search for work. That creates a lot of gaps in their education, not only academically, but socially. We serve students from pre-K up until the age of 21 years of age. One of the programs that we offer during the summer is the Migrant Career Academy Partnership Program. We want them to know that there's a world beyond the Coachella Valley. We started with 20 high school interns that were placed in areas such as doctor's offices, in politicians' offices, to make sure that they had those experiences it opens the eyes of our students of what is possible. It's possible to be a migrant student and then be successful in business or in architecture and engineering. We want them to feel that they can achieve and they can succeed in areas of higher learning. My name is Jesus. I am a senior at Coachella Valley High School. I am an intern in Desert Sands Unified School District. We were very proud to participate in this program. We had uh, participated a few years ago, pre-COVID, and really enjoyed the experience. So when the call came in this year, if we would take at least one, if not more, students into the summer program, we were really thrilled. So um, one of them was with the communications department, Dahlia, and uh, the other one you saw on the screen um, Jesus, or as we called him, Cesar, I'm not quite sure why, Dan, but anyway, that's what he told us. And he was in the nutrition services department because his goal is to become a nutritionist. So how perfect was that? So we were really thrilled and we hope that next year we will do this again and maybe be able to bring more students into different departments. So the program ends with a luncheon. And unfortunately, sorry, unfortunately, I was not able to attend the lunch and I was actually on vacation, but the wonderful Dan Capello represented the district. And so Dan, if you could join me, as well as Adriana Fernandez from the communications department, I'm going to present them with certificates from um, two elected officials recognizing the work that they did. So really excited to do this. Let's see. The first one is from Assemblyman Eduardo Garcia. And this one is to Dan. Thank you so much. And so this one must be for us. <laughs> so Adriana. And the other one is from um, Supervisor Manuel Perez. And I don't think this specifies which, oh, yes, it does. Dan? I think it's for me. I think it is. <laughs> and Adriana. So I don't know, would you like to say anything about the experience with our students? 
Um, good evening, board. Um, it was just an absolutely fantastic experience. Caesar was a lot of fun. We got to talk a lot about the way they do things differently at Coachella Valley um, because he comes from a different student, but I mean, it's different school, so we were very excited to have him. We had him on a lot of projects. Um, we did a farmer's market with the child care center here in the building. Um, we had him costing out food and paper products because, as all of you know, this has been an incredible incredibly difficult year for pricing and things like that so we kept him busy while he was here and then um as far as is his name caesar or jesus he just told us we don't care what you call us as long as you don't call us late for lunch i just wanted to say the communications team works really well together that's it i have to second that thank you very much there's one more um, announcement this evening, but it's not going to come from me. It's going to come from the president of the board, Anna Conover. Mrs. Conover, would you like to do it from there, or do you want to come down here? I'll do it from here. All Thank right. you, Ms. Perry. Thank you. Okay, so today is a momentous evening. Today we will be recognizing our very own Wendy Jonathan. Wendy Jonathan has been a valued member of the Desert Sands Unified School District team for 21 and a half. Got to put in that half. Starting as an elementary classroom teacher in 2000, she taught at Abraham Lincoln, Harry S. Truman, Benjamin Franklin, and Ronald Reagan Elementary Schools. Upon her retirement in 2012, Mrs. Jonathan ran for the Desert Sands Unified School District Board of Education and has served the district in that capacity for 10 and a half years. Additionally, she has served as a director of Riverside and Imperial Counties for the California School Board Association. Mrs. Jonathan will be missed as a valued member of this board and of the Desert Sands Unified School District. We are thankful for her service and her commitment to the staff, students, and community of Desert Sands Unified School District. Wendy, we have this plaque for you. We want to wish you the best of luck. Enjoy your retirement, and most of all, enjoy your grandson. Like to say a few words, Ms. Jonathan? Ah. I'm going to get emotional. <laughs> um, in fact, one of my former pr principals is out there and um, out there. Um, I actually um, cr started this journey a long time ago. My husband and I got married, came out to the desert in 79. Um, and uh, he was a CPA, and I worked in loss prevention um, at Saks Fifth Avenue, actually working on the computer <laughs> um, with their, uh, to try to help find uh, losses within the, uh, the uh, uh, chain of uh, Saks Fifth Avenue. Um, and um, we had children, and I decided I wanted to have a job um, that kind of complemented being a parent. Um, so, I applied for an attendance clerk at uh, Palm Desert Middle School before it was a charter school. And I will tell you, that day when I stepped on the middle school grounds, my life changed. Um, I fell in love with being around the students. Um, the teachers inspired me and uh, I came home and told my husband, I'm gonna go back to school, get my teaching credential. And that's what I did at night. And then I left Palm Desert Charter and worked at Truman, Adams Truman, Truman Adams, um, with Mrs. Friend and Mrs. Ward as their teacher aide. Um, and then started my career in Palm Springs Unified. Um, and I was there for many years um, and then transferred over to Desert Sands. Um, and I finished off uh, at Ronald Reagan, where I initially was, the principal was Mr. McLaughlin out there. Uh, incredible principal, one of my favorite principals ever. <laughs> and, um, and it's been a wonderful time. And I was ready to walk away from education, but, um, you know, teaching, but not education. So I ran for school board. 10 years have been amazing. Um, 
I will tell you the staff in uh, Desert Sands is unbelievable. Um, we have such stellar people working in our district um, from uh, purchasing to the warehouse, to our educational staff, our teachers, our directors, our superintendents, assistant superintendent. Um, they've all been amazing. Um, and I've always put children first and now I'm a grandmother and I have to put one child first. <laughs> um, and that's really important for me. Um, and so I wanna thank everybody here um, that's been a part of it and supporting me. Um, most importantly, I have a husband back there <laughs> who's been really incredible. And you've been such a wonderful person in my life and really supporting in everything I do. And I really appreciate that. And yes, the stories about school board and teaching will end in the next week and you won't hear them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and yes, this is now I'm on record to my son, my sons and their wives. No, I won't stop. To, I'll stop talking about school board now. Um, <laughs> but um, I just want to say it's been a wonderful, incredible experience and it's I, I think it's time to pass the baton, and I couldn't be more excited to see that Kaylee Watson will be um, filling these seats in the seat in uh, December, and she will do an incredible job. So I, I'm very pleased and happy about that. Um, but thank you so much, and I just want to say it's been a, a real pleasure serving with all of you. And um, and I, I got to give a shout out to. Scott Bailey and Gary Rutherford. Um, they were great superintendents that I worked with. And of course, Kelly, who I taught side by side with at Franklin, and now she's our superintendent. And staff, I love you all. You guys have been incredible. And Blanche, I love you too, and Adriana and everybody else. <laughs> Big hugs to everybody, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, item number 11, introduction of new or recently promoted employees, Dr. Mae Vollmer. Uh, yes, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Hyde. Good evening. So I'm excited. I have uh, quite a few um, announcements to make, actually nine. Um, I promise they'll be brief. Um, <laughs> so again, if, if they do seem briefer than normal and I'm introducing you, please, please don't take offense. I just want to be um, honor everyone's time. It's the first day of school. I'm thinking everyone is ready to go home and maybe rest up for a little bit so we can do it all over again tomorrow. So um, I, I will try to be brief, concise, but um, uh, convey the appreciation, the excitement we have for each one of these folks. So if I could ask uh, Michelle Sherland to step forward at the, to the dais, I'm happy to announce that she is now the assistant principal at Amelia Earhart Elementary School. Michelle attended. <laughs> Michelle attended uh, Cal State San Bernardino for her undergraduate and master's program. In addition to other military institutions, she also attended the United States Army War College. She is a veteran. She completed tours in Iraq, Afghanistan, Kuwait, and in the 90s and 2000s, throughout the 1990s and early 2000s, she's been awarded the Bronze Star. And in 2016 was the California Teacher of the Year for Desert Sands Unified School District. Michelle's coming home. She left for a short while to serve as an assistant principal in a neighboring district. We're glad she's back and she's married to Rodney and together they have a blended family with seven children, four grandchildren. Michelle, welcome back. And Michelle, I, I don't know if you have anyone here with you, but if you wanted to introduce them or just say a word or two. I have my dad here, Mr. McLaughlin, and my handsome husband. <laughs> and I'm so glad to be home. Thank you. So if I'm, I'm only, only going to say this once, and this is her full name. Um, I'm very excited to announce Elizabeth Del Campo Hartman, director, new director of professional development and teacher support. <laughs> Affectionately, we call her Lizzie, which she prefers. She attended undergraduate and graduate school in Ohio. She joined Desert Sands in 2016 as an assistant principal at La Quinta Middle School. 
In 2018, she was appointed and has been the proud principal of Indio Middle School since that time. Lizzie's married to Chris and they have two wonderful children. In her spare time, she enjoys cheering on the Cincinnati Bengals. Very much so. Very much All right, so. we'll overlook that. Um, <laughs> and, and, and again, welcome. And do you want to introduce, if you have any guests, and say a word or two? Absolutely. First, I want to thank the board, cabinet. I feel so incredibly honored to continue to serve in this district. Um, I am super excited this role. This is a big passion of mine, the whole piece around professional development, but especially teacher support and how important that support can be for our kids in the classroom. So I've been excited about this position since it was created years ago. Um, I also would be remiss to not thank Indio Middle School and the amazing staff. As Ms. Jonathan mentioned, the staff in the district is amazing and they've really helped me to grow as a leader. And I will be very sad to leave them, but I'm excited to um, spread the capacity. So I also want to introduce, because um, I think my daughter wouldn't let me leave if I didn't formally introduce her. Um, so my daughter, <laughs> Mallory, on the end, my husband, Chris, my mom, Jan, and then my son, Jonathan, um, who's going to keep IMS going legacy over there, and for their support and late hours and just everything that they've done for me. So thank you guys so much. Congratulations, Lizzie. I'm also pleased to introduce Dr. David Dunn, the new principal of Shadow Hills High School. <laughs> Dr. Dunn attended BYU for his undergraduate studies and the University of Utah for his graduate work, including his PhD. He taught biology and AP environmental science at the high school levels, served as an assistant principal, middle school and high school principal before joining the Desert Sands family. I believe that you have close to 22 years of experience as a secondary principal. Um, he has an incredible wife and five children. He enjoys golf, tennis, and pickleball. David, welcome. Do you have anyone to introduce? I, I know that you're, you're out here kind of on your own right now. I'm still in Utah. Okay. Well, welcome. Would you like to just say a word or two? Yeah, no. I'd like to thank the board and I'd like to thank the cabinet. Um, it, it, it feels good. It feels good. And, you know, we had a great, great first day of school. and just the beginning to a great experience. So. Right. Congratulations, Thank Dr. You. Dunn. If I could uh, introduce and ask Angelica Espinoza, our new prevention and intervention psychologist at Subboard. <laughs> Ms. Espinoza immigrated to the United States as a young child and has always placed a high value on education. She attended Cal State LA for her undergraduate work and Azusa Pacific for her master's degree and educational psychologist certification. She started her career as a paraeducator in grades ranging from TK all the way through high school before becoming a school psychologist. Ms. Espinoza loves nature, dogs, and helping others. Welcome to the district. Do you want to say a few words? Um, I just want to say thank you to the board and say that everyone has been extremely welcoming. Um, I'm very, very, very thankful to be here and I'm excited to support students and staff. Thank you. Well, welcome. Do you have anyone to introduce? Are you here by yourself? Here by myself. Okay, well, welcome. <laughs> We're all you. here to cheer you on. Thank you. <laughs> if I could have Kirsten Knapp, our new director of expanded learning, please step up to the dais. Mrs. Knapp attended college at the University of Oregon and earned her master's degree in administration from CSU San Bernardino. She started at Desert Sands 19 years ago and has served as an elementary teacher, district technology teacher on special assignment, assistant principal, and most recently, the principal of Franklin Elementary School, a post she's served since 2018. Kirsten enjoys spending time with her family at their home in Big Bear. I know that's true because she's there whenever she gets a free moment. So, <laughs> Kirsten, what, first off, congratulations. And do you want to introduce anyone? Sure. Thank you. Um, thank you to my husband, Chad, here, who's been so supportive through this journey. And thank you, uh, board and cabinet. And congratulations, Wendy. I was thinking about it. I'm like, gosh, I've been here 19 years, but 15 of them I've either worked for or with you um, on this journey. And just really excited to be Opening this new position, I think the key word I keep saying over and over again is opportunity. So see where it brings us. So thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> and if I could ask uh, Monica, I think it's Patty Ayala, um, our new mental health therapist to step forward. Welcome. 
So Ms. Patty Oyalala earned her uh, undergraduate degree from Chapman University and attended Ar Argosi University for a master's degree. She's a licensed marriage and family therapist and in 2019 was recognized by a Comerica break with a Women in Diversity Award. She enjoys spending time with her husband, Carlos, and daughter, Lisa, and her son, Kobe. Monica, welcome to Desert Sands. Would you like to introduce someone and maybe say a word or two? No, I didn't bring the kids because they'd be right <laughs> <laughs> um, But I do want to say thank you to the cabinet. Thank you to the board. I'm super excited. I am an Indio High School graduate. Um, so to be able to bring mental health services um, and bring this Medi-Cal billing and community-based service into the district is exciting. Um, I think it has a lot of potential and I'm super excited to be a part of the team. So thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. And I'd like to introduce Richard Romero, the new assistant principal of La Quinta Middle School. <laughs> Mr. Romero attended Harvard, UCLA, and the National University and National University for his master's degrees. He has taught all elementary grades and been an instructional coach and state and federal project facilitator before becoming an assistant principal at La Quinta Middle School. Richard is an avid tennis and pickleball player and would like to thank his wife, Merce, and twin daughters, Alana and Ava, for their support. Welcome. Would you like to say a word or two and maybe introduce a guest? I'd like to thank my wife, Merce, for all her support. And I'd like to thank the board and cabinet and Dr. Borgen for the opportunity to serve the students, staff, and families at La Quinta Middle. At La Quinta Middle, we're the Bulldogs. And I assure you, with Bulldog tenacity, I will work to ensure all students learn, achieve, and succeed. Thank you. Thank you, and good luck. One more thing. I worked with Wendy Jonathan a long time, too. And, I just, and, and that's more important than anything I said. Congratulations, Wendy. <laughs> if I could ask Cecilia Sanchez, uh, Educational psychologist to step forward, please. Ms. Sanchez. Sanchez attended the University of San Diego and earned her master's degree from Loyola Marymount University. She is from the Coachella, she is from Coachella Valley and recently relocated there with her husband and two children. In her spare time, she enjoys DIY do-it-yourself projects and watching psychological thrillers or scary movies. <laughs> wow. Well, welcome to Desert Sands. Um, Ms. Sanchez, would you like, do you have anyone here that you'd like to introduce? No, I came by myself Okay, as well. maybe, maybe My just say a word or two. There's lots of support here, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just want to thank everybody uh, for the opportunity. I'm really excited about the school year and, you know, just kind of hitting the ground running and thank you. <laughs> Congratulations and welcome. Not least, I'd like to invite Jennifer Lantic to come out, come forward. She's the new assistant principal at Jefferson Middle School. <laughs> Jennifer Lantic, she likes to be called Luna. I discovered this. It took me a while. I, I finally figured it out. Dr. Cook only had to tell me about 20 times. <laughs> so she attended Cal State University at San Bernardino. Cal Baptist and Concordia universities while earning her degrees, both undergraduate and masters. She became interested in teaching when she was an avid tutor and is herself a first generation college graduate. She's taught all grade levels from TK through 12th grade. She is married and has three cats. <laughs> Luna, is there anyone here that you'd like to introduce? Yes, thank you. I would love to introduce my very supportive parents who are still here by my side supporting me, my first teacher ever. Thank you. I would like to thank the board for this opportunity. I'm so humbled and honored. My heart is full of gratitude, and I would be remiss if I didn't thank Lizzie Hartman for being one of my very first mentors as an amazing principal and Dr. Cook. So thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Any, um, do you want to, um, does the board have any comments on community staff recognition and the new and recently promoted employees? Ms. Pierce? Yes, I was um, 
Happy to hear about the Migrant Career Program. I think that is so wonderful that it could be brought back and that it ever was for these kids to see a different world than the one that they're traveling in in their growing up years and to see the possibilities they have. So I hope, as Mary said, that uh, this could be expanded and accept many more interns that can get this experience. And I um, want to wish Wendy Jonathan um, happiness in her, in her time with her family and thank her for the time on the board and all her years of teaching and giving to the district. And I, too many people, all these wonderful people that are moving up in their careers, um, Michelle, Lizzie, Dr. Dunn, that are psychologists and mental health people, Angelica and Monica and Graciela to that, you know, adding to our our group and team that are helping the kids really cope with everything in during their educational years. And the other APs, uh, Richard, I've known for a long time and uh, welcoming Jennifer and her cats. And Kirsten, I, I was with before and I know she'll do a great job with that opportunity. She's very creative and I think that program will just be so great for the kids and getting ACEs to everybody, you know, as well. Welcoming Dr. Garcia, uh, I don't know if it's doctor, Dr. Garcia, to as the AP of DRA. It's not on here. He wasn't here, but I did look him up online. He got a mohawk when they did something. The kids did something. Anyway, um, just want to welcome everybody and thank them for their dedication to education and moving up in their careers. Michelle, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Porras. Well, I'm just going to ditto that instead of going through everything but um welcome everybody uh congratulations on your new positions i look forward to seeing you all and so excited for all of you and congratulations on your first day of school um and so excited about the migrant program i think that's awesome so anyway thanks all it's jonathan first of all i have to i i was remiss because i looked out there and i see a face back there of an actual board member, another board member that I served with, Mike Duran. He was a great board member, and I just want to say thank you because you were one of my mentors when I was on the school board. So thank you so much. Uh, love to see you here. Um, uh, so many new employees, so many names. It's I, I, Welcome if you are, haven't been part of the Desert Sands family. It's an incredible family. Uh, for those that have been here, Kristen, you know, I've known you forever. You, 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 I, you were like a shining star. I saw you going, and I knew great things were going to happen. And I, I'm so proud and happy for you, Michelle. I mean, you know, I'm, I, I couldn't be happier. I loved your little picture on, you know, saying that uh, your favorite quote is "I love you" by, um, you know, her husband. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think you're going to do an incredible job as well. And and Richard, you know, I remember sitting down and working on that dis distinguished school. Do you remember application together? Um, and incredible. I think I said that the uh, a few months ago, saying how you're a person to watch. And obviously, I was right. Um, and all of you are. So I'm so excited to see all of you here. Enjoy. You'll be you'll be the happiest you've ever been because it's an incredible place to work. Thank you so much. Dr. May Bulmer. Yes, thank you um, very much. I want to just say congratulations to all of our new and recently promoted employees. It's very exciting to see so many people from within the district um, promoting and growing and advancing in their careers. So congratulations to each and every one of you. Very, very exciting. Uh, and I also just wanted to say, Wendy um, stole my thunder. I was going to say that we taught across the hall from each other, but she already said it. But we did teach across the hall from each other, and uh, we actually taught across the hall from one another my very first year teaching. And uh, it was really an outstanding experience to have you across the hall from me. Uh, she's definitely an incredibly talented teacher, always has been. And so it was. I felt very, very fortunate to have you across the hall to be able to learn from you, uh, and just to have you as a friend. So that was a wonderful experience. And I just want to echo how deeply thankful we are to all your years of service to the district in many different capacities. Uh, and we're very excited for you, but we will miss you uh, very, very much. But I know that we'll keep in touch. And I know that you're off to very important things. 
So thank you very much for all your years in Desert Sands. We want to welcome everybody. Um, Michelle, I appreciate your service. Thank you. And I do want to just congratulate everybody who has a promotion. Welcome those that are coming into our district. Wendy, you were there when I came on the board and you kind of helped guide me along as a newbie over here. So I do appreciate that. And um, I wish you the best in everything that you do. And uh, we will now move on to item number 12 information we have one informational item item one is an actuarial study of retiree health liabilities item 13 staff conference items dr may volmer uh, yes i'm actually going to turn it over to mr aquino for the next three staff conference items good evening board uh, I'd just like to introduce to you uh, Adam Bauer and Annika Bergstrom, who are here from Fieldman Rolliffman Associates. For those of you um, who have been here on the board for a while, you know Adam uh, has worked with us for uh, quite some time now as our financial advisor for our bond sales, um, i.e. our CFDs and general obligation bonds. Uh, also, who is not here in, in attendance is our Barbara Carter, who is our special tax and financing consultants related to CFDs and developer fees and Sam Santana, who's our special counsel on CFDs, who all three of those groups work together uh, in, um, in tandem for what you're going to hear tonight, our proposed community facilities district 2022-1. Great. Well, good evening, and thank you for your, your time. Uh, what we have before you is we are in the process of, maybe I should wait a minute. Great. Over the last several months, we've been negotiating with a developer who did submitted a petition and requested that you form a community facilities district on their property. And there's certainly a lot of benefits for landowners to request this of you. And so one of the things we've been working on is if the district's going to consider something like this, we need to make sure that there's a benefit to the district. And so I think we lost this presentation. Um, but on the first slide, once we get it back up again, we start off by just explaining when any new development comes to town that there's a statutory fee that they must pay. And when we looked at this community facilities district, what we focused on was in order to have the district consider the CFD, that's not it. Um, in order for the district to consider the CFD, they would need to guarantee the district a 30% premium over the then statutory fee. That then is very important. If we would have gotten a level one prior to the state allocation board approving, and we're on slide two, please. If we would have got the original level one, it was $4.19. So even if you had some premium to that, it's much lower than the 479 that's now been approved. So we get so if that 479 goes up and they have not pulled a building permit, this will go up with it. So we get to track inflation going upward but also lock in a premium structure on that. And that's what this does, is since the developer certainly gets benefits from this, we work to make sure that the district gets benefits as well. So to give you some perspective on where this is, on slide three, we have a map of the property. And you can see Jefferson runs a bit down the middle and actually splits the project. You can see a piece to the left and a piece to the right, highlighting green there. That is where the developers requested that we form a community facilities district. And we've lifted the schools on the far right there that are that this falls within their attendance boundaries. On the next slide, slide four, we just try to give you some informa more information. Once again, we talk about location. This is a relatively small project, 115. Any smaller than this, you might not want to consider it just because of the cost associated with it. But this does hit the criteria where it's worth considering. Um, the uh, square footage of these homes uh, have a pretty big range, anywhere from 1,200 all the way to 2,500. For a project that's 115 units, that's a pretty wide range. So, so what they're trying to do is build a lot of different products to appeal to a lot of different um, community members. The special tax range between 1,300 and 1,600 there, if you look across Riverside County, that's a relatively low number. So the tax burden associated with this CFD 
it, uh, is lower than we've seen a lot of other places. Um, what most important here is this 30% premium that we uh, I've talked about earlier, but the developer has guaranteed that should the school should um, move forward with this. So then we have the developer, LGI Homes. They're known uh, not that well in this area, um, but they are known for building entry-level product. And within about the last year or so, they bought some property up north in Sacramento. We've run into them in Hemet, and now we're running into them here. So this, this, this really fits with what they're doing. And then you have your finance team below that. So this, this developer group, that's, they, they uh, we, while we're partners in all this, we've negotiated, and they're on the other side of the table, the, the folks that represent you are listed here under the digital parties involved. And that's uh, DWK as your attorney. You have Phil and Roll Up and Associates, which is both Annika and myself. And then we have uh, Barbara Hill Cotter from Special uh, District and Financing. And um, Annika will handle the next few slides. Um, so here you can see the process to form CFD number 22-1. Um, the district did form a CFD last year. And if you go to the next slide, um, the items you'll see here they're gonna be grouped together and I will go over the key dates um, that you'll see on the next slide. But it is important to keep in mind that the resolution of intention and the resolution of formation need to be no less than 30, but no more than 60 days apart. And we have that outlined in our schedule. Um, here are the key dates for CFD number 22-1. And tonight we're giving you the introduction. On September 6th, um, the board will consider the resolution of intention. October 11th, the board will consider the resolution of formation. And October 25th, the board will consider the second reading of ordinance. Um, and that's the end of our presentation, but Adam and I are here to answer any questions. Thank you. Ms. Pierce, do you have any questions? No, not at this time. Ms. Porras? No, but thank you for the presentation. Jonathan? Thank you for the presentation, and I have no questions at this time. I want to thank both of you for your time. Thank you, Austin. Dr. Vollmer? Any no, I do not. Okay. And Mr. Aquino, you're up. <laughs> Second item, uh, general obligation refunding bonds. Um, in an effort to maintain a good be and being good stewards of taxpayer dollars, uh, we are always looking at opportunities to save uh, members of our community um, uh, on their taxes. And tonight, you'll hear, again, a presentation from both Adam Bauer and Christian Gare on a possible refunding opportunity. Good evening, members of the board, uh, Dr. Vollmer, cabinet. It's uh, wonderful to be here. Kristen Gare with RBC Capital Markets. We've been uh, the district's bond underwriter for, gosh, the better part of a couple of decades. So it's um, we're here before you tonight uh, with a potential opportunity to uh, secure uh, savings for taxpayers. On this first slide here, I'm going to give a quick overview of the bond market. Uh, we show the interest rate movements um, and I uh, want to give you a little bit of a historical perspective since 2009. The, the chart here shows the um, what's called the AAA municipal market data, and that's the tax-exempt interest rate movements, both from the 10, 20, and 30-year over this time period. Obviously, we're all living a, in, a, in a time of high inflation, so we've seen we were experienced uh, all-time historic lows in interest rates uh, during the pandemic. And Truly, since the beginning of this year, those interest rates have done nothing but climb. But the advantage um, with this particular refunding for the district right now is that the district can access tax-exempt interest rates with this particular refunding. If we had looked at it, um, and act, in fact, we had looked at it a couple of years ago, um, we would have had to have done it on a taxable basis. So right now, we have an opportunity to use tax-exempt rates to lower the overall interest rates on the outstanding bonds. If we flip to the next slide, it, on page two, it's been a very volatile overall market with the rise in interest rates, uh, the supply of bonds in California nationally have gone down. There aren't as many opportunities to refinance outstanding debt, no different from out, um, refinancing your mortgage. That said, however, because volume is down, investors have fewer bonds to buy. So uh, there is more. There is money out there to really put to work. And the advantage for Desert Sands Unified School District is that it's a truly a marquee name in the marketplace, particularly in California. 
you all are, have been in the market um, with both uh, bonds for new projects, new money um, initiatives, as well as refinancing every couple of years. And over that time period, we've seen demand for your bonds be um, twice the amount of bonds offered. On average, we have about 20 investors that participate in your sales you have a very strong underlying credit rating. So it's a real uh, unique advantage. The market is uh, does remain volatile, but historically speaking, we're still at relatively ro low rates. And I'll, let, I'll uh, let Adam get into some of the details of the opportunity. Thank you. And this scare has really given us the high level macro interest rate environment. That interest rate environment has some real advantages and benefits to us in this next slide. On the next slide, what we're showing you is historical assessed value. And if you look at the bold square uh, there at the bottom, it says 2023. This is hot off the press, just came out from Riverside County. Your assessed value grew by 7.48%. If you look down below in that blue box there, you can see some of your averages. We blew way past that. So with the work from anywhere, with the low interest rate uh, environment, you've had turnover of homes at higher prices. And that's really pushed up your assessed value. What this means now is the tax rate per hundred thousand will be lower for your taxpayers than than we've been showing, which is already a lot lower than we actually showed when you had the elections out there. So this, along with things like your refunding, make that tax rate even lower for your um, homeowners within your community. So if we go to the next slide, please. This is a lot of data on one side, but this is uh, your debt that you have outstanding for your general obligation bonds. And um, what we're trying to show you, and it's highlighted in such a faint green there at the top, it's the one that we can uh, refinance at this current time. And you see there, a lot of these have dates by them, but this one says any date at 100. This means exactly what Ms. Garrett was talking about, where we can, since we don't have a long gap between the date here, we can actually refinance these with those tax exempt rates. And that's why we're talking about this one. So we very well, if rates don't go up too much, maybe talking about this 2013 one a year, not quite a year from now, maybe nine, nine or so months from now. But as we get within 90 days of these dates, if interest rates are low enough, we oftentimes can refinance that. And Desert Sands has gone out of the way and done this on a very frequent basis for the sole benefit of the taxpayers. And so on our last slide, or not our last slide, on slide five, what we're showing here is some potential uh, refunding savings. But we want to be really careful with this. If you look at this bottom table, it's a sensitivity graph. We're showing less than 25 basis points, more than 25 basis points. And that's because on our drive out here, rates went up five basis points for much of the yield curve. But if it was last Friday, they went down. So that means we really are seeing a lot more volatility Oftentimes when I've spoken to you, I will say it's been a rough day if rates went up by three basis points. And now five is no big deal, right? So we see a lot of bouncing around back and forth. So that's what this chart tries to do is say there could be a lot of movement, but even with a, a relatively large amount of movement, we still have a significant amount of savings. And if you look at that bottom chart, we show net present value savings. So this is the savings amount after we've discounted it to current dollars. So um, if, we, if rates went lower, we can get about that 2.1. When we ran the numbers on August 11th, we were showing about 1.6. And then to the far right, we're at 1.2. Um, that's if rates continue to go up. Um, but what this, this is after all the costs have been taken into account, and it's a, and the number discounted back to today's dollar, because we won't, the taxpayers won't get all these savings day one. They can get them between 2023 and 2031. And so we want to make sure we apply current, uh, current rate to that. Finally, like Annika did when she showed you the chart for the CFD um, that we're looking at, we also have a, a, a schedule here for the GEO bonds. This doesn't require three items for you. This is just one. <coughs> Excuse me. We would look to have you consider a resolution of issuance. That's where you approve the documents to form and give district staff the authority to complete the financing as long as it's within the parameters of that resolution. And that would be before you on September 6th. Um, and then from there, should the market cooperate, we'd be able to close the transaction um, October 5th. Please keep in mind, this uh, with GEO bonds, when you do a refinancing, you cannot extend the maturity. So it's not like what a lot of people do with a, ref with a refinance, where 
they keep you doing 30 years until they get close to retirement and they do a 15 to make up for all that. Uh, this is you keep the same term and it's really just once again, getting the taxpayer savings there. And you don't have, even if you approve on September 6th, the, the district staff would only move forward should it meet the parameters within that resolution. So you would never do this if it didn't get the economic benefit. So that's our last slide. Uh, we thank you for your time and both Chris and I here answer any questions. Thank you. Ms. Pierce, do you have any questions? I'm uh, happy to see that these are, uh, that you as advisors and consultants keep track of this along with um, Jordan to save the taxpayers money and to be um, cognizant of that. And uh, it's um, great that, you know, with those parameters, we can perhaps do that in the next month. Thank you for your report. Thank you. I think district staff gets all the credit. They keep checking in with us pretty frequently. Ms. Borras. No, thank you so much for your presentation. And anytime you say we can save our taxpayers money, it's a good thing. And when you're smiling, that's great. So thank you so much. Jonathan. I was, my husband was a CPA. Of course, I'm going to love taxpayer savings. Hello. Uh, no, just um, thank you again for everything you do and a uh, great job. And thank you, Jordan, doing a terrific job keeping on top of all of this. Dr. Okay, Walmer. I have no questions, but thank you very much. I'm glad to see that we are still keeping our credit rating really high and able to give back. So thank you for your presentation. Okay. And Mr. Aquino, he's headed that way. So I will go really quickly. Uh, as you know, the governor, um, we built our budget based on the governor's proposal uh, and then his revision in May. Subsequent to that, the state adopted a budget or enacted a budget. And because of the amount and the substantial nature of the changes that are necessitated in our budget, we're required by education code to make an adjustment to our um, budget within 45 days. So that ultimately, the, gov the, the governor signed the budget on the June 27th. So the 45th day takes us to August 11th, which we have our the um, revisions posted on our website under business services. So you could uh, see it there. In addition to on the uh, board agenda packet as an attachment. So what we're gonna go over really quickly is the final state budget. Um, we'll talk about the local control funding formula, the impact to that, the ELOT program, home to school, and the one-time block grants. As you know, um, uh, due to COVID and subsequent effects of that, our attendance has significantly dropped from what it has, its historical percentage was. We were around 94.969%, uh, and last year we were around 88%. The state saw a major impact across all school districts, so uh, what they decided to do was, in, was allow us to revert, revert back to our uh, 1920 attendance yield. So whatever our, whatever our attendance was during that year, we can apply that same attendance rate to our enrollment in the 2021-22 school year. So there was a increase in funding because of that. Uh, also, in addition to that, there was an augmentation to our base grant in the local control, control funding formula of 6.28%. So between both of those augmentations, uh, we have an increase of $24.7 million. So, the breakdown of that is a little bit complicated because part of those funds uh, were an increase to supplemental concentration, which has a targeted purpose. Those, not, those dollars are incorporated into our LCAP and they go through a long uh, process. Uh, on the base grant side basically is for other and all operational purposes. And when the governor um, talked about augmenting the base, he said, you know, use that money for things like uh, your pension cost increases. So things that normally would be set aside for specific purpose, it was kind of encapsulated into a catch-all cost, all the cost pressures that the school districts are facing. Uh, our attendance, st or the, the statewide average in attendance, oops, let me just go back, just to show you the change, uh, as we were talking about a unified school district in 1920, 
was 94.71% on average. Those are for all unified school, school districts across the state of California. In 21-22, that number dropped to 89.64%. And then you could see the corresponding grade spans, what the attendance and the impact subsequent to the pandemic has uh, done to uh, attendance. For Desert Sands, you could see we were at 94.96%, so we were above the state average. But in 21-22, we dropped. So historically, the, we were high, always higher than the statewide averages. Now, grades four through six, it was a push because the statewide average is 95.93%. Uh, but this past school year, we were below statewide averages. So we, you could see there, um, basically, for a unified school district, we were 1.12% below the statewide average. So we didn't perform on the attendance side as well as uh, the average school district in the state of California for a unified district. Uh, moving on to some of the other increases to our budget, the expanded learning opportunity program. Uh, we anticipated roughly around 5 million. The state was originally proposing to fund school districts higher than ours uh, if we were at uh, school districts above 80% on the unduplicated pupil count. Um, they revised that down to 75%. And then in addition to that, increased the funding fourfold. So our the impact to us was an increase to the expanded learning opportunities program by $16.2 million. And that's a program that uh, Kirsten um, that was introduced tonight is uh, responsible for managing. And that also is on the restricted general fund side. So again, targeted purpose, instructional purpose. Home to school transportation. This is the first time in many years that we've had an increase in um, transportation funding. I, you know, I've, I think even in the last 18 years that I've been doing this, I've never seen an increase in transportation funding. Um, the increase in funding that's applied here does require an expenditure plan by the board. Um, and you could see from the prior year funding, we received a, you know $1.8 million, but our ongoing transportation expense, not to include things like field trips and everything like that is $7.7 .7 million. So even with the augmentation, you could see the state does not fund um, fully fund transportation. One-time block grants. Uh, so we received two large one-time block grants. The first one uh, here, the Art Music Instructional Materials Discretionary Block Grant. That was an increase of $14.6 million. Again, that's a one-time uh, basis. It, this also requires an expenditure plan that the board needs to um, review and approve. And you can see there the listed allowable uses for uh, this Art Music Grant. Also, we received the Learning uh, Recovery Emergency Block Grant. That has an expenditure timeline for 2027-28. Uh, our funding increased uh, about $40 million. Again, this is also on the restricted side, has a targeted purpose. And the, this is a summary that basically shows what our adopted budget was um, that the board approved uh, prior to June 30th the governor's budget and how the impact of those changes that we reviewed impacts our multi or our current year budget. And that is all. Thank you. Ms. Pierce, do you have any questions? Well, speaking of transportation, which I've always hoped would come back for many of these parents, just the fact to get their kids to school and help help with that, you know, the trouble with the price of gas and all these things. There is that AB assembly bill coming up uh, that they're hoping will go through that could fully fund all transportation to schools. This is just the one time, this is just a one time. Um, no, that is. This will be an ongoing help to transportation, but it would be three million, three million something versus our real cost in years when we did do transportation was seven million. Or is that, am I reading that wrong? So that 7 million, 7.7, .7, I believe it was million dollar cost was, or is the cost that we incurred this past fiscal year? Just for special ed students? No, that is both shared between general and special education. The general education students that are outside our walking boundary or driving boundaries? 
So basically any student that receives transportation and the bus driver and the bus, all the costs associated with getting kids to school that fit within the board's policy for transportation, the cost was $7.7 .7 million total. So it, it, it's, that doesn't even include, like the Sun Bus brings back, it gives the high schoolers their transportation, but it doesn't really, it wouldn't, okay, when I first started here and kids were bused, mm -hmm. Um, and elementary and middle school students were also bused. How much would, I wonder how much it would take to, to actually um, fund that? So that is a very complex, complex. question that requires some significant yeah. analysis because the, the way our board policy reads right now is um, a walking distance by grade spans. Yes, right. Uh, we currently do not that. provide transportation. So you mentioned Sunbus, that's not a district expense. Right. Um, so that transportation cost includes all grade levels for special education and for grades uh, TK all the way to eight. I see. Well, I hope that bill passes. That would be great if it could be funded to help families and attendance. I think it would have an impact on it. Yeah, the imp the ultimately that seven point seven million dollars, the breakdown of that uh -huh. is is almost about a fifty fifty split between it's general special education ed. and oh. special education. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you for your report. Horas, I have no questions. Thank you, Jordan. You're welcome. Miss Jonathan. Thank you, Jordan. A great presentation. Um, uh, as far as attendance, I say if the student's not in school, a student can't learn, so we really need to get on top of that. But I, I was glad to see um, the uh, um, the extra money for transportation because we do need it, um, and it's always been a struggle with um, uh, making sure that we get a, our students to school through, the, through busing. Um, I also wanted to um, just do a warning to my colleagues when we hear one-time um, block grants, that that's one-time block grants and they will disappear eventually. It's not, it's not like it's an ongoing amount that we're gonna continue to get forever and ever. So um, if we're hiring staff, then understand that's only as long as we have the grant. And then once that funding runs out, either we pick it up through a different um, a a mechanism or we're going to have to eliminate that. So um, I'm just cautioning my fellow colleagues. Thank you. I have no questions, Dr. May Bomer. I have no questions, but thank you, Mr. Aquino. Thank you. Moving on to item 14, public hearing. There are none. Item 15, board and superintendent comments. Ms. Pierce. Okay, Ms. Borres. Um, well, first day of school, we went and visited five schools today and uh, it was great to see uh, the kids were excited, teachers were excited, there were tears and that's, I'm not just talking about the teachers. <laughs> um, but uh, it was great, it was really great to see the excitement, the energy was wonderful in all the schools and uh, we had our mayor, uh, Furman was there for Indio, and I can't remember. I didn't write it down. Harnick. Well, she, I didn't see Jan. Jan, I didn't see Jan Harnick. I think we missed her. But anyway, we were trying, they gave us 15 minutes to get from one place to the next, and it was like literally impossible. So, but um, anyway, I just, I just have to say that um, I met Wendy Jonathan in 2016, and um, you helped me so much being a new board member and I am gonna miss you terribly. And um, I was not happy about you resigning and I kind of you know, kicked and screamed about it, but I totally understand. And um, little Levi is so blessed to have you as a grandma. And he has been prayed for for a long time because you've been talking about being a grandma for a long time, so but I've really appreciated you and it's been an honor serving with you and um, I'm gonna miss you and I wish you all the best. Thanks, Jonathan. I just want to, everybody to know that 
Linda Porras is truly the sweetest person <laughs> that walks this planet. I mean, I, I adore her. So it's been truly my blessing to have you um, serve with you as well. And, and I'm very excited because you're now serving as a delegate for California School Boards Association and it's well deserved because well, you work hard and you, you deserve it. So thank you so much. Um, I wish everybody a wonderful school year. I'm, I think things are going to be, I'm looking, uh, uh, I have positive outlook this year. I think it's going to be a great year and um, there'll be just some wonderful memories that will be made. So um, congratulations to everybody getting through the first day and um, Again, thank you, my husband, for being here at 801 when it's really past your bedtime. Um, <laughs> so I really do appreciate you and love you very much. So, um, And thank you, Kelly, for your wonderful words. And Anna Conover, you have been an amazing, amazing uh, president of the board. I've been just so impressed with you. So, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, but today was the start of the new school year, and um, we did go and visit about five schools. And I just want to give a shout out to all staff. Mm -hmm. it, it seemed like it went smoothly. There were blips here and there. But it takes hours and hours of preparation before the doors even open from behind the scenes. Uh, teachers are in their classrooms, uh, staff from the top down. It takes a tremendous amount of effort to make the year run smoothly. It is the first day. There were tears. Um, there was a lot of smiles. And it just seemed like after the last two years, at the beginning of the school year, this just seemed like an awesome day. So I do want to give a shout out to everybody. And I mean everybody, staff, parents, community members, they were out there with us in the heat this morning welcoming the children of all the cities we have. So thank you to everybody. Uh, Dr. May Vollmer, do you have any comments? Yes, thank you. Um, I just as well would like to thank everyone for their tremendous effort on the first day of school. Uh, we debriefed about midday today and over and over again the comments were how smooth the start of school uh, went, how well systems were in place. There's always opportunities for improvement, of course. Um, but it really was a wonderful day and as well a great day with our different city officials that joined us. Uh, it was great to have the board visiting different schools um, as well. And I know staff, um, as President Conover mentioned, worked tirelessly to make sure that it was an absolutely fantastic day for our students. So I just wanna uh, thank everyone for all their hard work uh, in every capacity because it, it really does take every single person doing their part uh, and they did it in an excellent way. So thank you. It was a great start of the school year. Thank you. And now we're moving on to item 16, public comment on open session items. Before we start, I have a statement to read. Ed Code 7054, prohibiting political statements at board meetings. Pursuant to Education Code 7054, the district is prohibited from expanding any resources directly or indirectly to urge the support or defeat of any ballot measure or candidate for elective office, including candidates for the Board of Education. This means that the district must ensure no funds, supplies, equipment, monetary expenses, or manpower are used or expended for political purposes. These rules are applied equally upon any and all candidates and incumbents. Accordingly, since holding a board meeting involves district resources for staff, utilities, etc., public comment at a board meeting shall not include any statement that may reasonably be construed as urging the support or defeat of any candidate for election or any ballot measure. Okay. Communications from the floor. In accordance with bylaws of the board 9323, time is reserved for oral communications by members of the Board of Education or by citizens present. Citizens wishing to be heard on agenda items, regular or special meetings, and or non-agenda items within the subject matter jurisdiction of the board, regular meetings only, shall have a three minute limit. In accordance with the law, the board cannot take action on any item not appearing on the agenda as indicated in bylaws of the board 9323.2. First person is Sabby Jonathan. quick. 
Uh, Madam President, esteemed board members, amazing staff, uh, it's good to see all of you here. Thank you for allowing me a few minutes to, to share some comments with you. Um, you know, I, I hesitate um, uh, to add to all the accol accolades bestowed on Mrs. Jonathan tonight because I've watched her head just get bigger <laughs> and bigger all night long. Plus, she brings that three-minute timer home, and that's all I get to <laughs> talk at home. So, um, but I am the mayor pro tem for the city of Palm Desert, so I have official duties uh, to discharge. And I do want to thank, thank Mrs. Jonathan for the passion that I've personally observed over these five or six decades um, firsthand. And being here tonight and following around classrooms in the district, it's obvious that she's not alone. There are so many talented individuals and passionate individuals who come together for a common goal, and that's education and the welfare of our children. And I know you talk about that sometimes, but I've seen it happen day after day after day. Um, Mr. Jonathan, you have been a part of that. You've added to it. Um, our community is better for your passion, your dedication to education and children. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was great. <laughs> Thank you. Next is Trina Gonzalez Alisi. Good evening, cabinet and board. Um, I'd like to start off by saying Happy New Year. I get to say that twice a year, and that's my favorite greeting of the first day back to school is Happy New Year. Um, I would like to, on behalf of DSTA, I'd like to welcome Marcus Wood as assistant principal of Ed Services. This is your first school board meeting in that capacity. And also Dr. Kelly Mae Vollmer, I'd like to congratulate you on your superintendency. Um, Marcus and I have worked together since 2001 when we opened John Glenn. And actually we probably worked together slightly before that because I was at La Quinta middle of the year before and you were there too. Um, so we've worked together as colleagues. Um, he has also been my administrator. I've seen him um, progress up through the district and I just welcome the opportunity to continue to work with you. Um, also with Kelly, um, I transferred to elementary from a French and Spanish teacher. I have a K through 12 credential, but I mostly teach secondary. And I was given the opportunity to teach elementary um, at our two IB schools, and I was super nervous. And at the end of three years, I determined that I still really don't like elementary, <laughs> but Kelly was there for me. Um, I was a site rep there, and she was just so lovely to work with. And again, I've seen her progress through the district too, so thank you, and I really welcome the opportunity to continue our work together. Um, last week, we had a very successful um, new hire orientation, which has been rebranded as Mission CEO, uh, where we welcomed uh, several of our new staff. I'm really excited that a lot of the people that were at that event, because it was voluntary, are um, kind of, they're not newbies. So they're going to be able to hit the ground running a little bit better, which is really great for our students. Um, I'd like to congratulate, even though they're not here anymore, Richard Romero, uh, Kirsten Knapp, and Lizzie and I were all in the initial cohort of the Leadership Academy for Desert Sands, so we're the, the real OGs. Um, and then Michelle Cherlin and I got our master's together um, in, in, um, administrative, in administration. Um, and also I taught her daughters. So I love that we hear these stories that keep coming back around of, you know, family within Desert Sands. I'm going to run out of time. Um, I spent much of my summer break on, on admin interview panels, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, but I'm so happy to be able to contribute to some of the important decisions that are made in Desert Sands. I am very happy to see um, increased staffing for student and staff mental health and wellness when we welcomed new employees this evening. And then finally for um, administrators at Palm Desert High and uh, Desert Ridge Academy that were announced tonight, I don't know you, but I'm looking forward to working with you. And also Luna Valentic, we've worked together before and I'm so excited for you on that. So again, happy new year. I'm looking forward to a great year. Thank you. Thank you. Next is David Milton. Thank you for giving me this time. I'm here hat in hand. For the past 18 years, I've been a volunteer at uh, uh, 
Carter Elementary, I mean, forget, geez, it's been a long time. 15 years in the classroom in the last three years has been that fun time doing virtual with first graders. We learned in July that we were, this district was gonna allow volunteers back again. I went online and found, <clears throat> excuse me, found the application, filled it out. It, when I hit submit, it said it was received. In the past, about five or six days later, we would get an email saying, here's a link, go to your, um, take this, watch this video, take the test, you can do that and do that. Well, nothing happened. You know, it was about, well, about a month. I came last Tuesday, spoke with a very nice lady in um, personnel, Brenda, and asked her about where the application stood and she couldn't tell me. It was an outside firm gonna vent the new people. And I said, well, okay, that's what I appreciate that. I know your staff is thing. So I asked, could it possible, could I contact the new company that's doing it to see if our applications are in? Well, that's a privacy thing. I couldn't do that. I'm here hat in hand. Every volunteer I know only wants to help the children. School started today. We know there's a lot of children that need help early on. And I've been doing this in first and third grade for so long. In fact, I even retired a few teachers that couldn't promote me to fourth grade because fourth grade math was too hard for me. They started multiplying backwards, I quit. <laughs> anyway, but really, I, I'm just asking for somebody to look into it to see where the process is and if we could have some information because I know all the volunteers in all the schools want to get back as soon as they can. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next is Chase Coughlin. Hi, I'd like to talk about how at, I was doing some research on funding for schools. I found out this districts, they get paid $27,000 per student. So let's say, I don't know the exact amount, let's say there's 29,000 students here. That is $783 million. So you take 783 million divided by 180 days in a school year, that's four, million three hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars per day and you divide that by six hours and you get seven hundred and twenty five thousand dollars an hour is how much they're getting and my question is why is it the teachers only get two hundred and fifty dollars for the whole year for their uh, supplies and then any other supplies they buy on themselves they can't write off on their taxes, they only can write off that $250. And for that much money, you could afford to fund a lot more programs. I know some programs, like, I know some programs get more funding because they're part of creative arts, but some I think, like special ed should get more funding. So it's not that it's totally underfunded, but it does need help. Yeah. People always could use help. And also, uh, my school just hired 15 new teachers and moved around basically everyone in the school. So the teachers that have been teaching some of the same classes for 15 years are now no longer teaching them. and They don't have any of their students. So if you're not going to, if you're going to move everyone around, wouldn't it make since to help people out and also, you know, allow kids to have the opportunity to figure out their life in their last year of high school, especially special ed students like me who have autism, people with autism want consistency and they don't, they have a routine. Sudden change definitely shocks people, shocked me a little bit, shocked a lot of kids in my class. And now that no one's teaching, the teacher that was teaching it is no longer doing it. It's kind of upsetting to a lot of people. And I think it's fair to say that if you're going to have people 
do your um, teaching, if you're going to have someone teach something for a long time and then say, okay, here's a new teacher that's never taught this before and they have to figure it out. Wouldn't it make sense just to keep the old teacher that knows how to do it instead of changing it uh, with any subject? That's all. Bye. Thank you. Next is Tara Kaufman. Hi there. I just wanted to touch base. Welcome to everyone. And uh, it's a new school year. I hope it's going to start out good. One of the things that I'm concerned about is the vaccine pending doom. And one of the things Chase, my son, who just spoke and I were looking at is it's already forecasted as one of the necessary vaccines in parent and student view. Um, and Chase is not a candidate to get it. But I don't care what the CDC says. I don't really believe them anymore. The COVID virus is here to stay. Hence, we all must learn to live with it, just like the seasonal flu. Let's move on. Um, history's not there for us to like or dislike. And that's one of the things it's here for those, for us to learn from it. And if it offends us, even better, because then we're less, less likely to repeat it. It's not yours to erase, it belongs to all of us. So some of the things that are being implemented, it was interesting, Chase was in summer school and he, he just took tons of pictures, the material he was learning and how much um, CRT was blended into it and different things that were very progressive with sexuality. And that was just taking an English class. And um, education is not memorizing that Hitler killed 6 million Jews. Education is understanding how millions of Germans were convinced that it was required. Education is learning how to spot the signs of history repeating itself. And as a parent, you know, this is Einstein's quote, but the world will not be destroyed by those who do evil, but by those who watch without doing anything. I come to board meetings because as a parent, I taught my son Chase how to think and I avoid telling him what to think. Instead of just complaining about these important educational issues, we come to the board meetings. So our children and our children's children will be socialized by the media. Instead of teaching them, though, they will be unteaching them. So in record time, they have gone from the vax ending the pandemic to you can still get COVID if vaxxed, to you can pass COVID on to others even if vaxxed, to the unvaxxed are killing the vaxxed. And it's comical to me. And now the CDC has finally adopted focus protection as the COVID strategy. It's crucial for people at the local level to insist that future harmful COVID suppression policies have ended. And that's why I came here was to speak up against you know what's going on with the press and the push i know that there's on on there's um covid clinics or whatever where people can get their vaccines and everything right on campus for the kids and forgive me for not trusting an industry that's financially dependent on kids being sick um at this point i don't think it's who's right or who's wrong i think it's about getting the shot if you want it and don't if you don't want it and let each person make their own decision so Thank you. the COVID narrative is full of lies. Thank you. Next is uh, Michael Duran. All right. Good evening, esteemed board, superintendent, and cabinet. Uh, it's me, Michael Duran. <laughs> um, I'm here, and apologies in advance, uh, Ms. Jonathan, but they're only going to give me three minutes. Okay. <laughs> But, you know, right there, that, that summed it all up when, when you work with Wendy because, you know, you guys, you can show up, you work every day, but it's the laughter that really brings people together and reminds me of the good things and, good, and the good times we had. But um, <clears throat> I'm here to commend you and congratulate you on a career that was dedicated to championing children and teaching them. And, um, you know, it's hard to believe, but probably two of the more emotional people who work, maybe you and I, you know, both ways, sides of that coin. But uh, I know that Wendy always approached every single pupil, every single purpose, every single policy we ever devised 
or had together. And she did it with only the children's best interests at heart. And it was wonderful working with someone like that, Wendy. And I met you when you were a rep. When you worked, you didn't work for me, we worked together, as we said, right? Now remind me, were you ever at Carter? No, you weren't, okay. Because somehow I had you blended over there for a while. But I know you're at Carrillo, right? No. Oh, I've got my I was the union rep over at Truman Elementary. No, but you were at Truman. Yeah, I know. You are at Adams Truman for a long time. Well, and I, then Truman and Minoza teacher. And then you were over there. But, they, but you would be at the site when I went to the meetings. <laughs> I know. And you were a teacher back in the day. But anyway, as you stated, family is always first. And we all understand that. And that's important. And I wanted to say that. And, and for me, I'm going to miss the discussions, the dialogue. And from the front row, I want to wish you the best of everything. And uh, wherever you go, just, just remember the good times, the laughter. And we did. We had some great, great, great times. And I don't think ever did we ever really debate for long. Ah, Wendy, Wendy, Wendy had the right ideas and the right passion behind all those things. Um, Wendy, what I wrote here at the end is, you remind me what public service is and that government does work. And I wrote that a long time ago because we're all better because of the commitment that you made, not only individually, but I know that it came as a family cost because it comes to everybody that's up here at a cost to our families. And uh, that I'll always remember. And the rest of it, um, I do remember a windy story <laughs> with wind. <laughs> do you remember that one? Okay, I'll tell you later, but it was really great. But uh, yeah, it was, you still, yeah. But it was wonderful working with the Wendy. Best of you. And come by every once in a while, right? And let me know. We'll come in. We'll, am, we'll come out here one day and we'll just chat about the good times. Take care, everybody. Great work. Miss you all. Thank Have a great Thank evening. Thank you. Next, Nicholas Rose. Uh, good evening, everyone. I just wanted to start tonight um, as a parent, so I'm going to put my parents hat on. Dropped off my two kiddos at Reagan, and I want to give a shout out to the school side monitors, Miss Jolene. You know, that's kind of the first person um, everybody saw going through that kinder gate. And shout out to Mr. Baldwin. They had capes on, the school side monitors. Um, so they were the, the superheroes for today, helping out with all those littles, all the uh, emotional parents who had to drop off their new kindergartners. So um, yeah, it was just great to see that energy, to see how full the campus is. I know coming off the past two school years, I mean, that's, it's nice to see that back. And I think that's a nice way to kick off this school year is that return to parent involvement. I know we mentioned volunteer involvement and just, you know, that's the kind of energy that really drives education forward. Um, I also want to give a shout out I saw on the classified agenda there are a ton of classified folks who are now certificated so I just that's awesome to see that growth you know we had a lot of internal candidates um, also like Trina sat on a lot of interview panels these last couple months and so it's just great to see Desert Sands as a place where we have that growth that we encourage it um, Miss Jonathan in your story of just you know this is really a place that you can establish that career get your education have that support and just keep going. So, you know, I just, I thought that was awesome to see that, um, you know, those teachers are homegrown. They're familiar with our students, with what we do here, and they can just keep on going. And then lastly, I just wanted to thank Jordan and Dr. Hyde, the district's negotiations team. We put out that negotiations update. Um, it was an incredible day to come to the table and reach that agreement because again, in these kind of uncertain economic times where folks are worried about inflation, worried about putting gas in their car to come to work, to just know that the district is aware of that, that the board is aware of that, that we understand, you know, feel secure, be there for the students, you can make it to work, you can feel good about it. Um, I'm happy we were able to boost up the longevity schedule, because again, we want you here for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, because that means that you are a quality staff member, that you know the school, you know the students. I got a shout out um, from one of our administrators, I think Dr. Gustafson, the custodian at Jackson. He just saw him everywhere, making sure that site looked great. So, you know, that's really what I feel when we're able to come to the table and do that, that those 1,300 
classified staff that are some of the first faces our students see at the gates, that are keeping our sites clean, that are keeping bills paid, that we appreciate those folks and we make them feel like, you know, it is worth it and we know the work they're putting in. So thank you. Thank you. Next is Reno Barella. Good evening, board. Um, I'd like to address, direct my talk to all the parents and grandparents that are actually watch, watching online. It's great that kids are all going to school now, but you parents and grandparents out there have to remember the school is not your babysitter and the educators are not a replacement for you parents and grandparents. So I know when I was a kid, you know, my mom, my dad, my grandparents always wanted to know what I was learning and they were able to see what I was learning. I would bring my books home, bring my homework home, et cetera. So again, I'd like to encourage all the grandparents and parents that are watching online to ask your kids, what are you learning? Where are your books? Look at their homework, question them, get to know their parent, their teachers, get to know the faculty the best you can. I know there's a lot more restrictions on that, but get to know the values of your, your kids' uh, teachers. Make sure they're in the line with your values, values and principles, you know, God, family, and country. Because if we don't keep those principles, you're going to think your kid's doing okay. And then all of a sudden, they go out in the left field on you, and you're wondering, maybe I should have been more involved. So again, I'd like to encourage all the grandparents and parents to share this message and get together with other uh, parents to know what's going on in the school. Thanks. Thank you. Good evening, board, and uh, happy first day to everybody. Um, we're back. <laughs> Sorry, but uh, you know, over the summer, I went through your website, um, and thank you, Ms. Fisher, for meeting with me. Um, and I came across a website called uh, Trevor Projects, and I don't know if many of you guys know about it or anything like that, but um, it's been my duty since you know I had a bullied child here to go through everything on policy and procedures and really dissecting our website, I mean, our district site. Um, and it was really disturbing. Um, it actually, it's for a, it's a support group uh, and it's for uh, Trevor Project is a LGBTQ suicide prevention website. Sounds great, I'm all for it. But then when you go into that website, it's a breeding ground for pedophiles. I created a fake account. I went in there as a 16 year old and I found bestiality, uh, people talking about having sex with their dogs. Um, I found uh, adults offering to buy children silicone penises called, and they're labeled as packers. Um, I saw adults asking for pictures from children and it even says on their profile that these people are 25 and older. I saw children begging for admins on this site to do better at blocking all of this and getting these you know, people out of these chat rooms. I saw uh, chat rooms that were called littles. It was where a 47 year old was identifying as a nine year old and um, role playing with children. This is serious, this is real and our district promotes it. Um, I, there is so much I can't, I don't even have time to talk about it all. Then I noticed that it was removed um, and I clicked on the elementary school link. So from five-year-olds to 10-year-olds or eight-year-olds and four more of these chat rooms popped up. So not only did we hide the Trevor project from Desert Sands, which you could still get to it uh, on the link, but now there's four other sites just like this that you guys are promoting. 
I did bring it over to human trafficking for the Riverside County Sheriff's Department. I did bring it to Orange County Sheriff's Department, LA County Sheriff's Department. This is a huge deal. They are uh, really investigating this. Um, this needs to be taken down. We, ha we need support for our children, of course. I needed one for my daughter and you guys know that, but this isn't it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next is John Parker. Good evening. I did have something prepared, but it, uh, after listening to the uh, presentations today, that went right out the window. I have a question. Um, where can you find the details of the budget for the district? Is there somewhere you can go, somebody to go to? How, how would you find the breakdown of the budget if you're a citizen? It's on the district's uh, business services website under district financial forms. Okay. Um, and by the way, I, I think that you should have a camera on the people speaking. I think it would show respect to the people. The camera's on you. The camera's on you, but not the person speaking. I think that would show respect to the people that take the time to drive over here and, and speak. Um, during the presentation, uh, it was noted that the attendance has dropped and it's just sort of a throwaway comment because of the pandemic. Well, no, not really. I mean, yes, in one sense, but, but it wasn't the pandemic. It was what the pandemic revealed to parents, to a lot of the people that are here, uh, that are concerned about what their children are being taught. Uh, was it a population decline? No. I mean, the valley is growing. A lot more people are moving to the valley. Uh, so I would suggest that, as with the state, it, it's not just, you know, a district issue, but I would suggest that it was the way the pandemic was handled. You know, from the very beginning, and I've said this before, I've been before you now for over a year, um, you know, masking children was a huge mistake. I think most people acknowledge that now, the CDC and other uh, entities uh, acknowledge that, that that's a mistake, but the damage was done. And so the parent, and not only that, and we'll get into a couple of other things, but injecting, the, I'm, I'm gonna run out of time, so it's not gonna matter. Uh, injecting the children, and I've sent you articles in your email, uh, information. We know that the children don't need to be injected and yet we're starting the clinics back up again, you know, bring in your children as young as five and get the shot, you know, and again, what shot are they getting? But they don't need it. And we know that there's a lot of adverse effects from the shot, not only for adults, but for children. And that program needs to come to an end. Um, I have a lot of other things, but that will be for another day. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Gail Clark. Hi, hello. Good evening and um, congratulations. First day of school, yay. Um, I am the executive director of Bermuda Dunes Learning Center. We opened it up in January, will be our 30th anniversary. We opened up another location. Actually, yesterday was, I think, our year anniversary. Did last year's school started on the 15th? If, anyway, this is our, this week's our year anniversary. That we opened up the second location. Um, what's interesting tonight, listening to the attendance, how the attendance has dropped down for the elementary schools and, and middle schools. There is a greater need than ever for child care. Bermuda Dunes Learning Center, and it's not just our site. We've had, um, we've got a wait list to get into the program. There's needs for child care, quality child care. And I'm so excited 
about the um, Extended Learning Opportunity Program, ELAP. Um, we are hoping to contract with the district to provide care for children, and we're hoping to contract soon. And the reason why I'm speaking tonight, I'm hoping somehow, I don't know if it's not too late, that we can get onto the agenda for next month. I really appreciate Wendy Jonathan, who thank you so much for all the years you have put into this district. I reached out to Wendy um, about our concern. Bermuda Dunes Learning Center in Palm Desert provides after school care for approximately 40 children at Washington Charter School. Half of the children that attend our program are receiving free child care because we have a contract with the state of California. Bermuda Dunes Learning Center received a contract with the state to provide child care, free child care for children that qualify. If we can contract with the district as an ELAP provider, we will be able to continue to provide the free child care and the big part of the picture for us will be to get transportation directly to our location. Currently, the children that attend our program are getting dropped off approximately 0.4 of a mile from our site. Today was the first day. We got the children there safely, but I had a child, a five-year-old in tears. I had a mother in tears. It's too hot and we're off on an incline to walk the children. So once we contract with the district, I'm very excited because then we will be able to get transportation safely to the entrance of our school. So I'm really hoping that this can happen. My concern is that I was hoping somehow it would be, I don't, I know it couldn't be on tonight's agenda and I don't exactly know how everything works. And I've been in touch with Kirsty, Kirsten Knapp um, and I know everybody's so busy because she's the principal of Franklin. She's trying to get her school open today. Um, Mr. Lehman, I'm trying to work with him. And Mr. Kurt, um, what's the principal's name from? Christensen. Christensen. Which, interesting, when I spoke to him on the phone, he reminded me I didn't know that his daughter had attended our child care center. So, but it, anyways, my point is I'm looking forward to working with the district. I hope we can work with the district. But one of the things I do want to point out with Extended Learning Opportunity Program, this is for children, for all children in the district to help their learning, to help them, not just an after school babysitting program, but Thank to extend, extend their program. Thank you, ma'am, your time is up. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Next is Betty Calloway. You put topic school board elections. That is not an allowable topic. Would you like to talk about anything else? Thank you. Moving on to item 17, general functions business services. There are six items in general functions business services. Is there a motion to take item 17.1 through 17.6 as a group or individually? I move that we take 17.1 to 17.6 as a group. Linda Porras. Is there a second? I'll second Wendy Jonathan. It has been moved and seconded to take item 17.1 through 17.6 as a group. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, calls for the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? This motion carries. <laughs> Moving on, item 18, general functions, educational services. Is there a motion to approve um, the memorandum of understanding with the Parent Institute for Quality Education? To approve 18.1, uh, Patricia Pierce. Okay, is there a second? Second, Linda Porras. It has been moved and seconded to approve the MOU with PK. Is there any discussion? I just wanna say that this program is in many of our schools and I've been able to attend some of the graduations that the parents go through the whole program. They are very appreciative and it takes time and effort for them to show up consistently every week. And um, they're there for a reason to be able to help their students be successful. So I really do like this program. Is there any other comments or discussion? Ditto. Okay. <laughs> Hearing none, calls for the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? This motion carries. <laughs> Moving on to item 19, general functions, personnel services. There are 16 items in general functions, personnel services. Is there a motion to take items 19.1 through 19.6 as a group or individually? 
Make a motion to take 19.1 to 19.16 as a group. Second, Linda Porras. Okay. Just double checking, making sure it did go to number 16. Okay. It has been moved and seconded to take these items as a group. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, calls for the questions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? This motion carries. Moving on to item 20, general function, student support services. And we have one item. Is there a motion to approve the memorandum of understanding with Coachella Valley Adult School? So move Linda Porras. Is there a second? Second, Wendy Jonathan. It has been moved and seconded to approve the MOU with the Coachella Valley Adult School. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, calls for the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I will be respectfully abstaining as I work there. This motion carries. <laughs> item 21, general function superintendent. There is none. Moving on, item 22, consent items, student matters. There are none. 23, consent items, business services. There are five items in consent items, business services. Is there a motion to take items 23.1 through 23.5 as a group or individually? Make a motion to take items number 23.1 to 23.5 as a group. Is there a second? Second, Linda Porras. It has been moved and seconded to take these items as a group. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, calls for the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? This motion carries. <laughs> Moving on, item 24, consent items, educational services. There are nine items in consent items, educational services. Is there a motion to take items 24.1 through 24.9 as a group or individually? Move to take them as a group, Wendy Jonathan. Is there a second? Second, Linda Porras. It has been moved and seconded to take items 24.1 through 24.9 as a group. Is there any discussion? I want to uh, point out tools for tomorrow. It's really an incredible program, and I'd like to see. I, I always like seeing that on our agenda, so um, I'm glad that we have that in our schools. Any other comments or discussion? Hearing none, calls for the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? This motion carries. <laughs> Moving on, item 25, consent item personnel services. There are none. Item 26, consent item student support services. There are five items in consent items student support services. Is there a motion to take items 26.1 through 26.5 as a group or individually? I move that we take 26.1 to one to five. Um, um, anyway, Linda Porras. <laughs> Was that as a group? Yes. Okay. Yes. Is there a second? Right. Shapiro's. Second. Okay. It has been moved and seconded to take items 26.1 <laughs> through 26.5 as a group. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, calls for the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? This motion carries. Moving on, item 27, consent item superintendent. There are none. 28, personnel actions certificated. Dr. Hyde, do you have any items? I do. I have a few items that I'd like to talk about. But uh, first, I just, um, as you probably have noticed, there have been a number of uh, certificated management openings um, <laughs> over the last few months. And um, I, I think, first off, when we have an opening, openings like that, the first thing we try to do as a healthy organization is look from within. Who do we who do we have, you know, essentially on the bench? Who's 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 the next group coming up? And I'm really excited. Since April of 2022, really beginning with the appointment of uh, Dr. May Balmer, um, the district has filled 15 certificated management vacancies. Of those 15 appointments, 11 have come from within the organization. If the board approves the appointment recommendations today, the district will have promoted 16 of its existing staff into leadership positions. In other words, nearly 73% of the certificated management positions appointed since April have come from within our district. So with that being said, um, 20, item 28.1, certificated personnel. I have a number of blind appointments I'd like to make to the board. Um, and these are all recommendations. Um, we are very pleased to recommend the appointment of Melanie Manessis to the position of coordinator of multilingual learner programs. We are also very pleased to recommend the, rec 
the appointment of Richard Pimentel to the position of principal of Amistad High School. We are also pleased to recommend the appointment of Erasmo Garcia to the position of principal at Desert Ridge Academy. Again, we're pleased and en enthusiastic to, in to recommend uh, Brian Grass to the position of principal at Franklin Elementary School. And then our very own Marcy Herrera to the position of principal at Indio Middle School. Also pleased to uh, recommend Sarit Saig to the position of principal at Palm Desert High School. And last but certainly not least, very pleased to recommend Mary Alexander to the position of assistant principal at Shadow Hills High School. Thank you. Okay, item 28.1, certificated personnel. Is there a motion to approve item 28.1 as listed? And with the additions. So moved, Linda Porras. Second, Wendy Jonathan. Has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? I just want to say, first of all, I saw Mary Perry Glenn. She's probably crying a little. Because <laughs> her little daughter, Mary Herrera, is like the uh, uh, Marcy Herrera. Oh, my goodness. Um, oh, my goodness. Congratulations. Well, she's. <laughs> She's a merry person. That's why I said that. <laughs> Congratulations. You must be very proud, and it's well-deserved. She's an incredible person. Um, and Sarit, my goodness, my goodness. I'm so <laughs> excited. I, 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 wanted, I want to take a little credit because I kind of encouraged her to come to our district. I'm just letting you know because I've known her since she was a little girl. So, And then I found out that she was interested in coming out to the desert again. So I couldn't be happier. So great news, wonderful news. I just want to say um, I'm so excited for Marcy um, to Mary. get, well, <laughs> Mary's daughter, to uh, to get this position and um, well-deserved. And I'm so excited to see her in this position. I think she's going to be incredible. And um, also Richard Pimentel for Amistad. Who can replace David? But anyway, sorry. But um, anyway, I'm super excited for for him. I think he's he's going to do wonderful things there too, and everybody else. But you know, anyway, my heart is like so much for them. But um, that's all. I do want to comment that by hiring from within, it does create a domino effect. So I know when people say there's a lot of movement right now, there is. Yeah. It's good movement though. We, I think we should grow our own and we should take that leap of faith with, you know, with our personnel that we have. So any other comments or discussion? Can I make can, one comment? You can. can I just, I'm, I meant to do this earlier, so I was remiss in not doing so, but uh, everyone, as we mentioned, has worked incredibly hard for the start of school. Uh, but I have to give a shout out to the personnel department because um, with this many hires coming forward, they have been working tirelessly uh, to get all these people ready and into positions, um, ultimately to benefit our students. So I just want to give them a shout out for really great work. Thank you. Yes. That is, I think the list, I, if I'm not mistaken, one of those lists was like 34, 35 pages. As I was scrolling through the attachment, looking at all the names, I'm like, my God, when, yeah, but I'm glad. We got it done, Dr. Hyde, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> so if there's no other comments, calls for the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? This motion carries. Um, item 29, personal actions classified. Dr. Hyde, do you have any items? I do. I would like to make a, a, a comment, and I, I kind of skipped it over on, on our certificated. I don't know if this is out of protocol. So... So you can stop me if you need to, but uh, our, we have a single certificated um, retirement uh, today, um, and that is actually um, Delia Strike. I think it's Stryker from Page Middle School, and she's retiring after 18 years of service to the district. So moving right along to classified, our classified retirements in this evening's agenda represent a total of 38 combined years of service to the district, and I think that's pretty exciting and remarkable. There, any items? Any? No, no, no blind, blind items. items okay. Classified. All right. So moving on, 29.1, classified personnel. Is there a motion to approve items 29.1 as listed? So moved, Linda Porras. Is there a second? Second, Wendy Jonathan. 
It has been moved and seconded to approve item 29.1 classified personnel. Is there any discussion? Are there any retirees? He just mentioned no. But no, that was for classified, correct? I and actually did both, but I, but I didn't mention them by name, and I can. Yes, you shouldn't mention them by name because they made it to the finish line. That's they? right. Well, I, I just wanted you to call my name again. So, <laughs> um, so, so first, I'd like we have three um, retirements. The first is Elva Corral. Um, she's from Indio High School, and she's been an office specialist there for 16 years. And then our next uh, retirement is Heidi Eden. She is actually an administrative assistant at Page Middle School, and she's retiring after five years of service to the district. And last is uh, one of our bus drivers, Lauren McGuire. Um, Lauren is uh, retiring from being a bus driver after 16 years of service to the district. And again, that represents a combined total of, of 38 years of service. So pretty exciting. Congratulations to these folks. Thank you. Any other comments or discussion? Hearing none, calls for the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? This motion carries. And item 30, call out of closed session actions. Dr. May Vollmer. We do not have any as we will be reconvening to closed session. Item 31, suggestions. We will have call outs after that, sorry. Excuse the interruption. Item 31, suggestions for future agendas that receive at least three votes. Ms. Pierce? I have none at this time. Okay, Ms. Borras? I have none. Ms. Jonathan? A couple of things. I know I'm only on the board for four more days, but I figure I can say, and maybe you can get back to me within four days and let me know <laughs> that this will. Um, I, I maybe um, check into the process that we're doing for the volunteers so it's not so complicated and that they can get feedback much quicker. And because obviously we've got parents, I'm not parents, but people that want to volunteer, and that's important that they um, know very quickly. Um, this Trevor project, um, and she mentioned there's some pop-ups. Um, again, if we can look into that and shut that down and make sure that that doesn't happen. We did shut the Trevor project down. And do we, but do we have four more pop-ups or something? I need to look into that. What she was referring to, as she mentioned, I did meet with her and another, um, uh, not parent here, local parent, but another parent and talked to other, um, you know, Tiffany and, and different people, and we looked into that and vetted it, and we did remove it from our site, if, uh, our maybe website. If, maybe if we can reach out to her. I will call her again. Other kind of, yeah, I will. And finally, about the lap contract, again, I don't know how quickly or how fast this process is working. Again, letting people know, because I guess it affects transportation and, and students that will be participating in that program. So um, those are the things you have less than four days now. <laughs> <laughs> And I have none. Thank you. Item 32, announcements. The next regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Education is September 6, 2022, in the District Education Center Boardroom, 47950 Dune Palms Road, La Quinta, California. Item 33, we will be reconvening to close session. And so we will come back when we're done with that to adjourn and to do our call out of closed session items. Thank you.